皆さんこんにちは、ケントです。Town Records went bankrupt in 2008. It's still huge in Japan. Toys R Us went bankrupt in 2017. It's still going strong in Japan. How did this happen? Let's find out. Tower Records started off in 1960 by Russell Solomon as a record store in Sacramento, California. By 1967, business expanded to San Francisco, exploding onto the scene along with the Summer of Love. And by 1979, business was growing. It was then when Japanese business people started to reach out. They were like, hey, you want to open in Japan? So they started talking when the Japanese partners that were supposed to put up some capital said, Uh, we don't have as much money as we thought. We cool? Tower Records did not like that. Tower Records then sent people of their own to Japan to see for themselves how the Japanese market was. When in Sapporo, they found a Tower Records already there. A bootleg version. In the end, Tower Records took over the Sapporo store and began running the business themselves. Just a year later, they built stores in Shibuya. And over the next 10 20 years, they continued their explosive expansion. And in 1995, they eventually built the Shibuya Tower Store, which was billed as the largest record store in the world. And by this time, they were also building stores in Canada, the UK, Taiwan, Singapore, Mexico, totaling over 190 stores worldwide. They were making cash. But come the 2000s, their business started to crash. Online piracy and mass discount stores such as Best Buy, Circuit City, and Walmart undercut their business, and combined with their expansion, all the stores they built suddenly turned into money pits at the same time. In 2002, the Japanese branch of the company saw an opportunity. The management got together and bought out the Japanese branch from the main company, establishing themselves as an independent company. In 2006, the main company in the US filed for bankruptcy, finishing it off in 2008. And Tower Records in Japan ended up surviving. So, what's the story behind Toys R Us? To begin, we need to talk about Fujita Den. He was working in exports and imports when one day he ate at a McDonald's and fell in love. In 1971, he was the first to be able to get franchise rights for a McDonald's in Japan. And the rest is history. As of 2018, there are over 2,900 locations in Japan, and as of 2019, the Japanese branch makes over $2.5 billion in revenue per year. Anyway, after helping expand McDonald's in Japan, Fujita tried to find another business to bring from the US, and that was Toys R Us. In 1991, Toys R Us Japan was established as a partnership with the Japanese McDonald's company. Meanwhile, Toys R Us had already expanded into China by partnering with a Hong Kong retail conglomerate, Fung Group. Eventually, Toys R Us Japan and Toys R Us Asia w a s folded into one large Toys R Us Asia company that was spun out from the US Toys R Us company as a separate legal entity. When in 2017, the US based Toys R Us went bankrupt, The separate Toys R Us Asia company survived. While the US shut down its 800 stores across the United States, 160 Toys R Us stores still exist in Japan. If you are in Japan, you are going to find a Lawson. It's a convenience store chain with the third most amount of stores only behind 7 Eleven and Family Mart, and it has over 14,000 locations all over Japan. Lawson's roots actually come s from the US, specifically, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. In 1939, dairy owner James J.J. Lawson started a store to sell his milk. This became a chain around Ohio that sold various foods like milk, bread, ham, and chip dip. Eventually, in 1959, he was bought out by Consolidated Foods. Fast forward to 1974, Lawson was a popular chain of convenience stores popping up all over the Midwest. That was when Consolidated Foods signed a deal with the Japanese company Daie to open Lawson's in Japan. The next year, in 1975, Lawson in Japan became a wholly owned subsidiary of Daie Japan. Things were going well for the Lawson brand in the US until 1985, Lawson in the US was sold to Dairy Mart and all their names were changed. But in Japan, it still exists today. That doesn't mean that Lawson. Is completely gone from the US though. As I mentioned before, Lawson in the US used to sell a chip dip. This chip dip proved so popular that it continued to be sold at the newly renamed Dairy Mart. 
And when Dairy Mart was sold to another conglomerate, the Dairy Marts were then converted to Circle K's. Again, the chip dip was still so popular, Circle K's decided to continue to carry that chip dip. Now, here's a twist. The Japanese company still calling themselves Lawson has started to expand back into the US, opening stores in Honolulu. And I checked. There is a Circle K in Honolulu. So obviously the question is, can you buy Lawson's chip dip in Honolulu and then go to a Lawson to get the full Lawson experience? Sadly, no. The chip dip is only available in Circle K's where the original Lawson's were, namely Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, and Northern Kentucky. I think you're starting to see a pattern here. These brands that survive in Japan are usually brands that came to Japan and for some reason or another became independent entities from the US original brand. That's why they survived when the original US brand went bankrupt or got bought out. The last brand I want to talk about is Mr. Donut. With 1,300 stores in Japan, it is one of the largest and popular donut shops in Japan. But again, it has its roots in the United States. It was 1950 in Quincy, Massachusetts. Bill Rosenberg started Dunkin' Donuts and managed operations along with his brother-in-law, Harry Winokur. In 1955, Harry Winokur decided to break off their business relationship and decided to build his own donut company, Mr. Donut. After their first stores were a huge success, Mr. Donut began franchising their stores, resulting in over 275 stores in the US. In 1970, Minneapolis-based International Multifoods bought out Mr. Donut. At the same time, Dunkin' Donuts moved into Japan. And quickly following suit, in 1971, the first Mr. Donut was opened in Osaka. And after some success, in 1983, Duskin, a Japanese company, bought out the rights to Asian franchises for Mr. Donut from International Multifoods. By 1980, Mr. Donut had over 550 stores in the US. Then, an English company called Allied Lions bought out Dunkin' Donuts and then immediately acquired Mr. Donut and renamed those stores to Dunkin' Donuts. Meanwhile in Japan, Dunkin' Donuts and Mr. Donut were both still alive. But eventually, Mr. Donut won over the market, kicking almost all Dunkin' Donuts out of Japan, except for a few stores in US military bases. So in conclusion, there are quite a few major companies in Japan that were originally US brands. Most of the Japanese brands survived while the original company or brand in the US didn't because the Japanese brand became independent companies somewhere along the way. Today I want to feature Cassandra Chu. She goes by Cass Paints. She's a third year engineering major going into the medical field and an awesome artist. She's largely self-taught with roots and inspiration in anime and her Asian culture. She paints skate decks, denim jackets, sells stickers, and makes awesome art. To check out more of her art, hit up the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching today. If you liked the video, I appreciate it a bunch if you could hit that like button. And if you have any suggestions or any comments, please drop them in the comments below. Next time, I'm gonna teach you how the way haikus are taught in English speaking countries is always going to be a little wrong. If you wanna find out how, hit that subscribe button, man. Thank you.